Hello and welcome to Art with Tracy Ann. In this week's video I'll be using my iPad and Apple Pencil and the app Procreate. But don't worry if you don't have these things I also did the same pattern on a tile. So follow along. If you're using an iPad for this project, you'll need an iPad and if you're using an Apple Pencil, it needs to be compatible with the iPad you're using. You'll also need to download the Procreate app. You can still use this app on any iPad without the Apple Pencil, just using your finger or any kind of stylus. However, it's much easier with an Apple Pencil. Click on the Procreate tab, which brings us into our gallery. To create a canvas, we click on that little plus sign up there. And there's see the folder with the little plus on it. We open that. Now, because a Zentangle tile is 3.5 inches, I'm going to click on inches and put 3.5 width and 3.5 height. DPI, you could leave it like that, but if you ever want to print anything out, use 300. It's telling me I have a maximum of 250 layers. Yours might be different. It just depends what kind of iPad you're using. Click Done and it takes us into our canvas. If I go back and click on that gallery, it takes us back into the gallery. We can name our project. So if I click on that, and I'm going to call it Zentangle. So we'll go back into our canvas. With our finger and thumb, we can pinch that and make it bigger and smaller, turn it around just like you would a Zentangle tile. If I go up and click on that brush tool, I'm going to choose inking and technical pen. Click off it and this is what it looks like. If I go to this slider I can make it bigger or smaller. So if I put it up you can see that little circle how it gets bigger or smaller. Test it out, have a little try and the other slider is the opacity. So if I make it bigger you can see that now it's more opaque. You may recognize this little undo button so we can undo anything we've done or we can use two fingers. Three fingers brings it back, redo, two fingers takes it away again. If we go up to our layers button, on the layer we're using, we can, if we press on it we can see clear and that also takes away what we've written on the page. Something else I do that you might find handy, if you go to the wrench tool, up to Preferences at the top. I'm going to click on Gesture Controls. And here at the top you can see Disable Touch Actions. Now I'll switch that off just to show you what this means. So if I'm drawing with my pen and I accidentally touch the screen with my finger, I can make some marks, which we don't really want, especially once you're getting into a project. So I go back in, the wrench tool, preferences, gesture controls and switch that little switch on to disable touch actions. If you're using your finger then leave that button off. If we want to undo or redo quickly, if I use three fingers and hold them down all the marks come back on the page two fingers and hold them down they all disappear. For the rest of this video I'm putting screen view so that you don't see my hands anymore and you don't get that reflection and you'll be able to see much more clearly what I'm doing. I'll head back into the canvas now. In the top right hand corner you'll see those two little boxes they're the layers. So if I click on the layer on and go up to rename and I'm going to rename this Border. 
Now if I go up to my brush tool, select sketching and 6B pencil. Test out the size of the pencil and now we're ready to create our border starting with a dot in each corner. We can join the dots and turn the tile as you're going as if you would a paper tile. You may notice that the lines get lighter or darker. The Apple Pencil is pressure sensitive so if I press down really hard I get a dark line. Softer I can get a very light line. Now I'm going to head on back up to the layer section and click on the plus to create a new layer. I'm going to rename this layer string. Click back on my brush tool and I'm still in sketching so that'll be fine. And I'm going to make a closed shape with wiggly lines it looks a bit like a paint splat. So this is what it looks like on our paper tile. Back onto the iPad and I'm going to create another layer and rename this layer Flux. Go back up to our brush tool and select inking and technical pen. So I'll zoom in and now I'm going to draw flux in that little crevice. So make three leafy shapes and then head on to the next crevice and do the same thing. Turning the tile as I go, I'll do this all the way around. Now I'll add a little line and a dot in each one. If I turn the tile so that I'm looking at the inside, I'm going to do the same thing on the inside crevices. Just draw the flux within each one, pointing towards the centre. Now I'm going to fill that area between the flux and the outside border. So just adding flux shapes and if there's smaller spaces add a little orb. doesn't matter if I cross that border a little bit, the border and the string are there just as guides. I might also add a few more flux to that centre part.
This is what it looks like on our paper tile. I'll add another layer and because we're still in inking when I go to my brush tool I can just leave it how it is. For this pattern I'm starting at the centre going to the edge of the flux and just adding a little bit of a widened part at the edge. It's a little bit like drawing pepper but instead of leaving that open centre I'm going right to the middle each time. As I go I can add little orbs here and there to fill in some gaps. I can also use my eraser tool to neaten it up if I go over any lines. Here it is again on our paper tile. If I head back up to our layers and click back on the flux layer, then click the plus and add a layer. If I go back to the flux layer and click on it, a little menu comes up. In that menu I'm going to select Reference, then go back to our Added layer and highlight it. In the top left hand corner I'm going to click on the Selection tool. A menu pops up at the bottom and I want to highlight Automatic. Now if I click on any of the shapes, because I've made the flux layer, the reference, it's going to recognize those shapes. So as long as they're closed shapes, when I click on them, they'll turn blue. At the moment, the color doesn't matter. It's just highlighting those shapes, selecting those shapes so that when I draw on them later, it's only going to draw within the shapes that I've highlighted. When I click on the brush tool, the blue goes away, but if I zoom in, you can see in the background there's striped lines. Within my brush tool, I'm going to select sketching and 6B pencil. It's important you don't touch that select tool. As soon as you do, all our highlighted areas will go away. Because I've selected the 6B pencil, it's just like adding graphite to a normal tile. Shade the bottom corners of those flux shapes. Keep that select tool highlighted and go up to our smudge tool. Now here I'm going to select painting and the round brush. The smudge tool works a little bit like our tortillon. Push it one way or the other until it's blended in and you have that softer shadow. I'll go now to my other pattern and add a layer and I'll do the same thing. Because we don't have any closed shapes on this layer, we won't be using the select tool. Again, we'll use the pencil tool to create the shadows. I'm colouring quite thickly here because I want a much stronger shadow. It's very important to keep the layers separate because if you want to go back and modify anything, you can change one layer and not have it affect the other layers. As you're looking close up here you can see that where I used that select tool there's a fine line in the background where it didn't quite fill but I can go back in there afterwards and touch that up a little bit. I'll just add my signature, my initials using an inking brush. There's the finished result. And that's what it looks like on a paper tile. If we want to export this file, 
you just go up to the wrench tool, click on share, and I'm using a JPEG image. It's exporting, so now I'm going to select where I want it to go, and I've put save image, and that will go into my camera roll. If you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to know more about drawing on the iPad, I've done a more comprehensive lesson in Skillshare. This is using more layers, more patterns, and similar techniques. This is the first of a series of videos I'll be doing on Skillshare. Each lesson will be using more complicated patterns and more of the features from the Procreate app. I haven't posted that yet, but as soon as I do, I'll provide a link below this video. So until next time, bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click on the links on the screen and don't forget, press that subscribe button.